morning. Welcome, TGIF. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll let the people roll in on this uh, Friday. As always, have my coffee. Hopefully, you have your coffee too. I've spilt a little bit already on the side, making a mess this morning. But it's great to have everybody here before we check in with who's joined us live. I just want to welcome everybody. If you're watching this on the replay, we go live Monday to Friday, 8 o'clock Pacific time to about 8.45 ish, usually. And uh, be great to have you join along. So if you're watching the replay, uh, subscribe, like, turn on notifications. You'll get notified when we uh, when we go live. It's a uh, it's usually a good time. Good group of people here. And let's see who let's see who is here on this uh, Friday edition. It's nice. I can't wait for the weekend. I don't know about you. Let me know in the comments about that one. And we have good news. We have some good news to share today. Finally, for once, I was able to find some some decent news. So that's that's always a good thing. And uh, we've got Candace. Welcome back, Candace. Always good to have you. Hopefully, your morning is going okay. Um, I looked a little bit at the market. I don't know how they let me know if the day trading is a good day or bad day. I have no idea. Get a sip of coffee to go, but welcome. It's always good to have you on. And Stan, good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome back. It's great. Regulars are here. Candace, I watched your Santa rally. I watched your Santa rally video yesterday and got me, got me, uh, it got me pumped up for maybe, maybe we are going to get a Santa rally. And actually I had to do a little short yesterday on that one. Those ones are always, the shorts are always kind of fun to see what, to see what they do. They always get kind of trying to be silly with shorts, I guess, not take things too seriously. So if you haven't seen the shorts, go check it out. A little Santa rally for us. Hopefully, maybe fingers crossed. We'll see what happens. Uh, we'll see. I think what happens next week, right? With with the CPI in the states, that will either be good or bad, or not as good, but not or bad, but not as not as bad. I don't know. We'll see what happens. So, I do have my cheer on today. Yeah. Well, it's Friday, and it, it, it's like it's a time. It's the time of year, and things are starting to wrap up. You know, for the year, for for work and stuff like that. So it's good. Get into the, get into a bit of the. I'm not a huge Christmas person, but eh, get into me a little bit of the spirit. I'll maybe change the background next week. Maybe get a Christmas theme going like that, or change the fireplace maybe to a Christmas, a Christmas thing. We'll see how that that happens. So, uh, just a couple updates today. First off, before we start, the first the first one. It's it, this is this is a, this is a live stream of all good news. So I I've been as everybody knows I use uh, ShakePay, and today was my. 365 uh, shake pay anniversary. So 365 days of uh, shaking on shake pay. So now I get a uh, thousand Satoshis a day when I shake, as long as I don't lose that streak, I'm going to try not to. Uh, so that was kind of nice. That was a good, good milestone. Uh, hopefully that will continue because I do not want to go back down to zero. <laughs> so we'll get that, uh, hopefully keep that going. Um, I think the next Next milestone, kind of with 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 shake pay is a thousand, but I mean that's that's way off. I'm not gonna hold my breath for that one. I, I it's it's gonna be tough now, uh, especially if I'm well. No, winter time's okay, but in the summertime I sometimes go camping, so I got to make sure I got a plan kind of things. So maybe only go camping for one day instead of two, so I don't lose those streaks. But if people don't have if people don't have shake pay, um, we've talked about it before. Uh, it's a good way to kind of get into oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, two day streak. Uh oh, yeah, that's no good. That's not much, but it's still worth building it up, right? So, uh, like on that note with with ShakePay, uh, if you are, you know, if you're kind of maybe interested in in Bitcoin or and well, they sell us, they do, they trade, they trade Bitcoin and Ethereum. So there's two on there. Those are the only two that they do. Uh, but the Bitcoin one, if you sign up, I think a lot of people know this, but if you sign up through a friend's link. So if you look at the video, I have a link to mine, but you might have a friend that has a shake pay and a link. And if you sign up, you have to, you have to buy, I think it's a hundred dollars still. You have to put a hundred dollars in to your account to buy Bitcoin, but then it gives you 10 bucks back and then you can, then you can sell it, right? You can literally, you can just sell it back to cash right away, but it gives you a, it also gives you the ability when you sign through the link is every day you can shake, you can shake your phone and it gives you free uh, free Bitcoin with Satoshis. It's not much, but it adds up, right? Like every day now it's about 25 cents. If you get up to about a thousand Satoshis, if I'm not mistaken, but of course the price is way down. So who, who knows? It's just kind of fun uh, to do. And it's a good way to kind of get, maybe build up a little bit of, build up a little bit of Bitcoin for not costing you. Really, if you just did it and, sh and shook it, it's not costing you anything other than the initial, you know, signing up to get that referral. But other than that, so it's kind of fun. 
and then I use it to purchase. I do like a, I do like a reoccurring purchase on that one. Uh, and then I just transfer it off every week to my uh, external wallet, my hard, my uh, cold wallet. So it's pretty easy, pretty simple. And then you can also sign up with it. This is such a plug for ShakePay. So funny. I don't mean to be, but you can also, you can also use it as like a, it gives you a, a visa, a debit card that you can tap and you can go to store. So you can put cash in money, uh, regular money uh, into your cash account. And then it gives you 1% cash back in Bitcoin. So easy way to do that. It's kind of, it's much like the well simple one where they give you cash back as well. So same, same, same idea, um, just a different, different company. So it's kind of fun. So I use that for my easy, my easy transfer. I use it, you know, every once in a while, I'll put like a hundred bucks over. And then I just use it for my, if I'm buying gas or something or at the store to get little, little things, I kind of, I kind of do that. The, the limiting factor of it is they haven't rolled out physical cards. So you don't actually get the number. So you, sometimes when you're tapping, if it's a too big of a purchase, it depends on the merchant. So if it's too big of a purchase, it might not work. Um, but I think they're rolling out cards there, like slowly rolling out the numbers and cards, everybody. So you'll be able to do online purchases for, for larger amounts, which would be good. So if you're making a large amount, you get 1% cash back. That's my plug over for the day. And uh, Abigail, good morning. Welcome. A, smi or, yeah, a smiley face. It's a good, it's a good day for, for people. Uh, it's happy, happy Friday. And Nadia's here, TGIF, of course and in keeping with our in keeping with our good news today so if you check your hopefully if you haven't maybe you haven't checked your email yet check your email if you're invested in vdy vdy's dividend came in today so i did a fractional purchase this morning uh, the dividend was twelve dollars and 99 cents those dividends every month are really really adding up so that was nice to be able to put that back into into the tfsa which was which was uh, which was great. Uh, so that came in this morning. Uh, I'm not sure what the next dividend in my portfolio is, but that was kind of nice to get and wake up to. It's always good to wake up to to extra money. Uh, so rolled that in and did a did the fractional purchase on that one just kind of right away as the market market open. And as, as always, I share it over on my community tab so you can kind of see the purchase there. So that's good. That built up, um, which is uh, which is awesome. Yeah, and. I guess I have, sorry, I guess let's, I do have, it's, I said mostly good. I said good news, but it's mostly, mostly good news, but this is kind of good, kind of bad, I guess, depending. So let's pull this up. Uh, Cause it, and we can mention, mention this. Let's go here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Let's share that. There we go. Lululemon today. So yes, yesterday they had their earnings. Um, uh, and so Lululemon sees a downbeat quarter as inflation hit consumers turns cautious. Now Lululemon today is down. Uh, let me pull up. It's uh, down substantially today. Uh, right now, 11 point, well, just over 11 and a half percent down. Uh, the reason being uh, they are basically, as of this article was written, said down shares were down six percent, but it's down now over over eleven. So high, it's this is what's coming down: high inflation, rising interest rates, um, a threat of recession. Uh, they've given basically guidance that uh, it's not going to be good necessarily looking forward. Although they, they did have a good a good Black Friday apparently, um, but where the big thing is is obviously their. Uh, their their the revenue sorry their where did it go here there it is the inventory they're sitting on at the end of the third quarter it rose 85 percent so there's and they're sitting on 1.7 billion dollars of inventory so interesting uh so the, that's going to mean there's probably going to be some sales at lululemon as they have to get rid of that inventory uh and that's just kind of goes to show i think people aren't you know this is the whole inflation supply chain you know if that much inventory is built up they have to get rid of it uh so it'll be interesting to see as we see if hopefully prices will start to come down like they like they have been we'll see the states we'll see the states numbers uh next i think it's monday if i'm not mistaken on the cpi in the states uh the producer came the ppi the producer price index came out today and it was higher than expected, but it seems to be still trending down. So are we on the right track? I, th I think so. Just how long this will last? That's a good question. Um, so we will see what happens. So that was interesting with Lululemon. I don't own obviously any Lululemon in my portfolio, um, unless there's some, no, I don't think there is any in 
there may be some in Van, in the Vanguard one. I'd have to double check. Not a big not a big position if it is, but um, there we go. Lululemon sitting on a lot of uh, a lot of uh, clothing and inventory right now. Uh, MC, good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Always good to have you. And now onto the good news. There's that was it. That's all, that's all for the bad news today. We'll keep the rest. We'll keep the rest. Uh, we'll keep the rest good. It's a good, good, happy day here today. So let's close that off and share our next uh, news. Oh, before we do, let's see. Lululemon looks interesting. Lots of inventory in hand. MC. It's um. It was uh, one point seven billion. Uh, yeah, as if is, I haven't really looked too much if it's if it's similar to other 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 companies, maybe to like some of the big ones, Target, Walmart. We'll have to see as they go. Um, I'm curious to know if fashion trends are changing or if it's typical supply demand retailer issues. Yeah, it might be different. I mean, this is the this is the big thing. So, I mean, Lululemon is obviously obviously very. Uh, I mean, we can talk about that. It's really athletic, right? Athletic wear, and I'm going to assume. Over the past two years, when a lot of people were working from home, they I mean, look at me. I work from home. I wear a I wear a hoodie, a t shirt, and and you know jeans or just regular you know nothing nothing fancy, and uh, because I'm not going into the office, and a lot of people probably did the same do the same thing when they're working from home. They're not buying you know dress clothes or casual casual business attire, right? So, is it peak athlete? athleisure maybe i i'm gonna i think they had a really big you know bump up because people during the pandemic right people were at home more so um will fashion trends probably change i guess i want to maybe look at is on the flip end of that is is um as aritzia like aritzia has been doing quite well so not they're not athleisure they're more you know business casual like i know obviously i don't i obviously don't shop there but i have my friend's wife shops there apparently like all the time so uh but that's a big thing getting dressed up going to the office so things maybe are changing so i think maybe maybe with supply chains lululemon overshot what they think the continuing demand would be i don't know good maybe something something to 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 watch but of course if if things are more expensive obviously inflation everything's more expensive and you have to with you know food being more expensive fuel being more expensive that kind of thing right heating gas you're going to spend more money on that and have less disposable income for things like the lemon right so that's that's i guess showing now with their with their inventory people aren't maybe spending as much as they were thinking they were going to be spending we'll see we'll see how that pans out but on to the good news on to the good news. Uh, oh, so MC, I love how we get. I love how we get sidetracked, and this is awesome. If you have comments, questions, throw them in. If I'm if I've skipped over it, don't because I don't always see the comments right away. We'll come back to it. By all means, feel free. It's a, it's everybody else's live stream too, so f- feel free to jump in and uh, give your two cents. It's always appreciated. So MC um, owns some Aritzia ATZ. Less less. It's like a tongue twister, athleisure, less less athleisure specific. The strategy is catered to all aspects of life, all ages, since they have multiple brands under the umbrella. There you go. Uh, they have, a, I think they've been really building their, from what I understand, their on, bit of their, a lot of their online presence as well, MC. Um, so that is, is uh, probably good for them. And I think they're really building up in the, if they're not, if I'm not mistaken, in the States as well. So it could be, they could be kind of maybe the next, the next kind of Lululemon style you know, Canadian, re, you know, clothing company to hit the big time. Maybe um, that's we'll have to uh, that's what we'll have to see. And they have been. Yes, they've been expanding into the U- United States. And that's uh, that would be good if you own. Uh, I know my friend's wife, she's in she's in finan- the financial industry. She, she works for a, um, a financial management company and she bought. I don't know what price she bought a Ritzy on, but she she she's done she's she still owns it all that she bought and she's done very very well obviously it's not sold yet so profit hasn't been locked in but uh she she got in uh, she's had it for quite a while um and did really well so um i probably would have sold it by now if i had any but um if i had bought it back 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 way ago but i think she's banking on it kind of going into that territory of what 
what Lululemon did, maybe. I don't know. We'll have to see. So hopefully it does. I always hope it does well for people that are own, owning different shares. You know, you never want someone to, to lose, you know. So hopefully if it does well, that's great. That's awesome. And hopefully yours do too, uh, MC, if you have a little bit that you're kind of hanging on to, to see what happens. So that's the good. That, sorry, that's the bad. That's the bad news out of the way. And so we have a couple of uh, couple of good news. Good news for sure. And this will be good for people that uh, people that are holding any kind of well, big one in Canada would be Air Can or Air Canada in Canada. That was kind of a, a big it was a popular one for a few couple of years thinking of the big because it's obviously took a big drop after when travel shut down, right? It just Air Canada pl plummeted. Um, it still hasn't really caught caught up or come back, right? Air Canada's and uh, so right now basically pent up winter demand has continued to fuel the airline recovery. So this could be good news for maybe people holding Air Canada. Uh, especially Canadians now, obviously it's getting colder outside, it's winter, and I think a lot of people are starting to go go away on holidays. Uh, some people, a lot of people go away during Christmas, and for, I know from talking to people that have been away or booking trips, I have a few friends that have done that, and I have some friends that are in the, in the travel in the travel uh, industry saying it's quite busy. So um, that's a good good sign for maybe some of the... Um, some of the airline airline stocks that will hopefully kind of carry up. Uh, it doesn't seem that um, inflation is stopping people from wanting to get away on a holiday, uh, especially for the last couple of years. There wasn't a lot of travel happening, so that's that's a good news, I guess. Uh, although, I mean, it's good if you're if if we can see some recovery and for, for people that that have Air Canada, um, maybe not so good if if it's um, if it's for uh inflation because obviously prices from what i understand um i haven't been on a holiday in so long it's been probably i haven't been out of the country and since the end of 2019 i just kind of finished trips just before the winter of 2019 and then we all know we all know what happened in in uh, 2020 but uh i was fortunate enough to travel but anyways that was the last trip i had so but i do know a lot of people that have been booking trips and some friends that are in travel that are away you see on their instagram or something that they're they're on holidays so but they are saying it's getting more expensive uh, for flights are getting more expensive hotels when you're away are getting more expensive for packages um as a sign of the time supply and demand right people people want to get away in the winter they have to pay for it so Now, one last, one last good news, and I told you it was pretty much all good, all good news today. I guess this is how you, depending on how you look at it, and we've talked about this before. We talked about this a few weeks ago when it was talking about uh, getting possibly launched. So, as you, if you, if you, do, if you don't know, what Telus was trying to do is apply to the CRTC to be able to add a credit card processing fee to their bills for people that paid their TELUS bills with a credit card, as opposed to direct, you know, direct deposit or paying it through a bill, regular bill payment. So if you have your bill set up for automatic payments, I do actually, because I get, I get cash, I get the way it's set up for me is I have a cashback MasterCard and for reoccurring purchases like this, uh, for bill payment re re reoccurring purchases, I get 2% cash back. Telus was wanting to charge everybody one and a half percent if they're using their if they're using their credit card to pay their bills, and the CRTC basically said, "Nope, you can't charge that." Uh, so that's a good thing for people. That will help, I think, people with you know, obviously saving any little bit is a good thing. Um, obviously, Telus has costs involved with transactions of credit cards, which can be quite expensive so they have to work that in um so if we don't i mean obviously i own telesure so maybe it's maybe it's not quite as good but i think in general i think this is probably a good thing uh because i think if if obviously if if telus started it they would everyone would probably want to start to charge this on their in the tele you know obviously bell or rogers whoever was would probably follow suit so now that this has been quashed it kind of sets the precedent to go okay, these other, these other providers aren't going to be doing the same thing. So I guess that's a good thing. It kind of does level the play. It doesn't really level, it levels it out. So at least, at least if it was for, for sake, if, if TELUS was only to, 
if Telus was only to be the one doing it, I could see how subscribers would go. Uh, I'm not going to keep. I'm not going to renew there. I'm going to go somewhere else where they're not charging me one and a half percent. So, because that can add up, right? I mean, uh, they, they, um, uh, that every little bit adds up, as we know from from the end of the year. So, we'll have to see. That's good. That's that's some good news. I think that is. I take that as good news for for everybody. So that's our good news for the day, which is always good. And MC, I have not uh, looked at TELUS, T-I-X-T. -T -I, I have not looked at that yet. Uh, let me see if I can find uh, something on it. T-X-I-T. Uh, TELUS Health. Uh, I can't. I can't find it. Has it been spun off yet? I, I can't see it here, MC. Tell us health. It's showing me, hmm. Right now it's showing me uh, on, if I'm just searching in Yahoo, MC, it's saying it's a private company still. Tell us health specializes in telehome care, electronic medical records, but it's not giving me a ticker symbol. Um, T, hmm. T I X T A. Sometimes I can. Oh, there it is. Okay, no, I found it. T yeah, I, I didn't have the dot dot t o in there. T i x t dot t o. Interesting. Hmm. I have an odd. I knew. I I do know that they have. I do know that they have branched out a little bit. With this is my cat there. Uh, they have branched out a little bit. A lot, well, a lot actually with a lot of the telehealth, a lot of the telehealth stuff, uh, MC, uh, I know from uh, like they have some of those, I know they're doing like appointments and stuff. You can get like doctors vir virtual virtual stuff, right? And I know they do a lot of their device, they have those devices too, right? The home, the home devices where they, where you, you know, for someone who, like for older people or like obviously have medical issues where you might fall or something like that. Uh, they have they do those as well too. I actually have that. My mom, I got that from my mom because uh, she's living alone now. So she's got this a device that hangs around. It's a Telus, and it tracks it. It tracks you as GPS. So if they're out, if she's out and about, something happens. It's always connect. And so it's connected through the the cellular network. So it, it um, if you push the button, it will. You can talk. They'll they'll they'll, they'll dial you in, and you can talk to them if there's an issue. Um, and it also tracks like it tracks a. Um, it tracks falls as well so pretty interesting stuff um, and it's not that you know what it's not that expensive for what you for the peace of mind for that kind of thing with um with uh someone who's elderly so i'm i like i like telus i i, I will be investing more in telus um yeah but i haven't looked at uh, the telus the spinoff of telus health that'd be something maybe to, maybe to check out in the future i don't know if anybody else invest if you anybody invests in it yet but Obviously, let me know in the comments. And other than that, portfolio-wise, I did, I did actually get a dividend from from my the venture fund as well. Paid a dividend on the. I should have mentioned that at the very beginning, but the venture fund. So the venture fund bit of update on that. I will do another video on that as it goes. It's uh, it's now closed. So if you actually log in and see your, see it in your account, it, it mentions if you're invested in that. It says uh, venture fund one is now closed. Uh, they're going to be start rolling out in january of 2023 from what i understand and that's what it's been uh, that's what it's been said but right now it's sitting in obviously in this in that purpose us cash like purpose us cash fund etf uh that pays dividends monthly and a dividend came in from that one as well so it actually came in the day before yesterday and then it got reinvested yesterday into the into the fund so it's getting actually coming in that one's actually one of my it's funny that was one of the one i was kind of uh, i will see how it pans out in the future but from the very beginning it's been because the us dollar has been so strong uh when i purchased it it actually worked out kind of nice so i've got it that's what that one's actually it's up right now whether that will continue is a whole completely other story but been happy with it right now uh the dividend that's coming in is it was about i think it was about if i remember correctly here uh you always get the sneak peek on the on the live stream from stuff but uh, let me see let me just log in quickly to my account and see the history here uh, it was eighteen dollars and thirty seven cents, so that's pretty good. Uh, pretty happy, pretty happy about that, which was uh, which was uh, nice to get. So I'll film a video on that one because I know there's a few people that are interested in the venture fund. Um, we'll see if it continues. That's kind of the 
the long, 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 long term investment on that one. So, GICs, EQ Bank dropped a one year GIC rate from 5.1 to 5. Um, yeah, interesting. I mean, the bond market and the yields are all wonky, right? So, I, there must be reasoning, reasoning, reasoning with that. MC, I, it's beyond my, my scope, but I think, I mean, that's, that's a, that's, that's not as insubstantial. I mean, it's, it's not a huge, huge amount, but it's also not, you know, unsubstantial either. Cause it's, um, a lot of times if you're thinking back in the past, we were, we weren't even getting, we weren't even getting close to 0.1% even on, on a regular save, like on a savings account, you know what I mean? So, um, but, uh, I think one year, uh, yeah, I mean, one year is still the thing with GICs and I've been looking at GICs a bit more, uh, MC, uh, for some of my, uh, some of my investments and I'm still like, I have, like, as I have an emergency fund and I'm think I'm debating, but it's like, it's one of those things where, cause it's an, like more of an emergency fund. You don't necessarily want to lock something up, but one year could probably make buy, you know, get by and to, to lock something in for one year and still make, I think still make 5% guaranteed. Uh, there's nothing, nothing necessarily wrong wrong with that uh it's but that being said five percent if you look at the and i've been looking at all these things so if anybody has any comments about that i've been looking at also the per, uh the purpose canadian they're changing the names of stuff it's like the purpose canadian cash etf so it basically invests in uh, high interest scheduled banks for and it pays a pays a monthly dividend but it's not locked not locked in and i think they're paying out about four point i think it's about four point six nine percent um and you're not having to lock in now there's a whole other thing it's obviously not cdic insured because it's in an etf and it's not a you know not necessarily guaranteed uh, but i think for for a short term invest short term hold it might be okay We'll, we'll have to, um, I, I'm still kind of researching that with what I actually want to want to do. Um, and we'll see, we'll see. But I mean, yeah, it is it is true. Is point one isn't very interesting, but the direction is down. Yeah, it's, um, this is the thing, like with Bank of Canada up another 50 basis points, we haven't really seen, well, you always want, yeah, they're always quick to, the, they're always like, even if we talk short-term saving, like short-term saving rates, and if you think, if if you think we've reached the peak, maybe right, short-term rates. But it's always interesting. They're they're quick to raise. The banks are always quick to raise prime rate on, and then of course on lending, right? So you, if you have a line, anything you're borrowing, all of a sudden gets more expensive instantly. But your savings account sitting there doesn't didn't raise by half by half percent. Yes. You know, when the bank of Canada knows they're always slow to give, that's what I, that's what I find. It's, is it fair? No, but that just seems how the banks like to operate. Right. Uh, so, I mean, I know from savings on well, simple, they're still only paying one and a half percent. And it's like, now do I start? Cause that's where I have my, that's where I have my, uh, my savings in, because it was better at the time it's always been better than my bank but it's like i mean it's still better than my bank but there's maybe and again we've talked about moving stuff around all the time so it's like but it's kind of to the point now where if someone is really behind the if a bank or financial offering is really behind the eight ball and what you can find somewhere else like substantially uh it might be it might make sense to move, move some money around depending so Purpose, yeah, PSA.to. So all, all big financial institutions have disallowed the purchasing of it as well as other ETFs that are similar to it. Oh, okay, interesting. So they probably want you to go, like I know, well, like, well, Simple obviously offers it, but um, is it, I guess, because they probably want them want you to go into, um, they want you to probably go, so National Bank, Quest Trade, Q trade well simple yeah so uh, my guess with that with the purpose one mc would be because they probably want to direct they probably don't leave by it because they want they must have they must have a similar fund maybe that's what i that's what i would, would be guessing if anybody uses some of the bigger brokerages like obviously i think like 
if Candace is watching, she could chime in with National Bank to check. But if anybody uses like the BMO, some of the big, some of the some of the bank ones, they must have their own. They must have their own like fund, money market fund or something like that that they're trying to direct people into versus something um, independent, right? That's that's my that's probably my my guess on that. Um, to see um, to see how how that works, and I know with purpose they're they're kind of they're re they're amalgamating two. I've just been done a bit of reading on it. They're amalgamating their money market, one of their money market funds into the cash ETF. So we'll have to see what it's, um, and there you go. Yeah. They want you to purchase their own, uh, savings. Yeah. So yeah, it makes sense. Savings accounts, GICs, mutual funds that it, they're driving you into me because they want to make money, right? Everybody wants to make money. Um, but that's what I've been kind of looking at just partly because MC, because it's my savings. Some of my savings is on, well, simple, like my long-term stuff, just sitting in the saves account. And I thought if I can bring it over to another, um, uh, it, keep it by keeping it in one little kind of in one place, obviously it would have to go from my save account over to self-directed, but it's just kind of, it is still kind of in one place, you know, that way it makes things kind of easier. Um, but that being said, and it's not locking it up, right? That's the big thing. I'm always kind of leery. With the with the GIC to lock up stuff because I've had to sometimes in the past you never know right like you never know when you might have to access it and um, you know locking up my kind of thing I mean it was enough for me to lock up five thousand dollars in the venture fund for you know ten years basically that I you can't you can't lock everything up uh, just in case right you never it's always kind of nice to have some some cash. Uh, okay. Maybe that's what, and uh, you know what, maybe that has to do then MC because they're, 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 let me pull it up, uh, meets the requirement for to, to purchasing volume assets under, yeah. So they, they have, they're, what they're doing is hold on here. I can find it. Cause I've been reading and this is maybe, this is maybe why they are, uh, change, uh, kind of amalgamating kind of things here. Um, this is probably the, the reason why, uh, let me pull up there let me pull up the news and i can get the actual name so i'm not not butchering the the names if i can find it there we go yeah let's hide that let's present it here share the screen and this kind of clarify things because it kind of was a bit confusing um so they are Let's pull this up. There we go. I, I you might not be able to read this, so I'll read it out. It's always sometimes hard with the live stream if it's too small, um, but I will read it. So basically, what they're doing as of January, so they announced this in November 20, 22, 2022. It's a proposal to merge the Purpose Money Market Fund into the Purpose High Interest Savings ETF. So the High Interest Savings ETF is the ticker, like you said, MC a PSA. Uh, so they're moving, they're terminating the the Money Market Fund. And they're continuing the purpose high interest savings ETF and they're changing, but they're going to change the name of it into the purpose high interest savings fund. There we go. Uh, and it's supposed to happen in honor around January 27th. Uh, it doesn't mention anything about kind of what you were talking about MC with assets on, but obviously, obviously if you're combining two funds, that's going to increase the assets under the, under administration. So maybe that will uh, bring on some other financial institutions to allow, to allow it to be traded. Maybe that's the, um, there we go. So the new, the new ETF will be MNY money makes sense. Not quite as good of a yield as PSA. Okay. Well, interesting. I haven't done anything yet. I'm still kind of looking at that. I'm not obviously not in a hurry. It's, it's okay. But uh, that was kind of one thing I kind of look had, had been, had been looking at. Uh, I'll have to definitely do a bit more, bit more research on that. But if it's, um, I know there's a few people, I don't know who's here, but I know there's a couple people on the channel that have kept kind of their cash that they have sitting in the, uh, sitting in that the only thing is it's it, it, it's like a regular it's not like a daily interest savings account where it's if you you know the interest isn't calculated daily on your in your etf so if you withdraw it and you you 
you don't make the the, the X dividend date, you're not going to get your yield on that. So you have to watch. You have to kind of watch. Obviously, watch that. So that's one thing too. Depending how long, obviously, it, you don't want. It's not necessarily a short short term um, cash. If you're just keeping cash for a very short term, just in the in the cash portion would be probably just you know, or in the save account to make a little bit of daily interest savings. But it's um, yeah. No shorter. There's no short. This is the. This is what's so confusing sometimes about investing. In MC is just, and everybody that's watching this. Like sometimes there's no. There's, it's so confused. It can be really confusing because there's 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 just so many products, right? And it's like you start you go down one rabbit hole and you find something else and you're like and you you, you start to really wonder about do, is this the right one? Is this the right one? Because there's you know ten other things that are exactly like this that have the similar things. And you're just kind of like sometimes it can be overwhelming. Uh, what to what to pick and this is this is how the this is how actually the channel on the live stream really helps because it kind of steers i think it, it me anyways it, it, it steers starts to steer you kind of in the right direction uh in making these choices and then you find out things like the, you know you find out you know i had no idea that the other financial institutions didn't sell um sell that etf so you learn these things which is great i really do uh, appreciate it and uh, we've got a uh jason welcome here we go let's pop that up show good morning welcome coffee time uh, TGIF, Jason, uh, and welcome to the stream. Welcome to the stream. Uh, I'm just going to look and see if they're going to change the name, uh, what they're going to call it here, renamed Purpose High Interest Savings Fund. But yeah, I don't know. Obviously, it must maybe change the ticker. It doesn't mention here in the ticker yet, but this was just a news thing in, just a news thing in Yahoo, Yahoo Finance. And great comment. Uh, PSA month, it is monthly dividend. Yeah, which is pretty good considering it is full liquidity for the most part. Um, you don't need to move money between brokerage and savings to collect interest. It kind of does. Yeah, that's exactly it kind of makes sense. So it makes it easier to makes it easier to kind of move move things, um, move things around internal, like internally, obviously, I mean, depending, the big thing with obviously using well simple is there's limit, there's limits to amounts that you can kind of instantly if but if it's in this if it's in the platform you're good right there's no kind of you can transfer between accounts quite quite easily there's no limit but if for example if you had a savings if you had savings somewhere else and all of a sudden like you were sitting on this you were sitting let's just let's just say it's in psa somewhere somewhere else just for all intents or a savings account anywhere else you want to bring cash over to invest in there is that limit right the uh is it five the instant there's like an instant limit that they have on there. I think it's $5,000 now. It keeps kind of going, it, it has gone up. Uh, so that's per month, I believe. I've never hit it, so I haven't really had to worry about it too much. But if you get your instant deposit, but if for some reason you want to bring in more to invest in something, uh, if you're lucky enough to have more to be able to put in, there's obviously um, a time that it would hold hold those funds before they uh, are available to to trade so something to be aware of so there's kind of pros and cons obviously to be in different places pro maybe you get better interest somewhere else con might be when you want, want to eventually invest in something you might not get it all there uh, as quickly as possible uh, that being said i haven't i haven't had any any ever any really problems or timing taking too long to come off of well simple uh like i have my say i have money in savings account there and from time to time i've, I've transferred money out into my uh into my bank account my regular account at cbc and it's it's literally there the next uh, the next day so i have not had any issues and um with that at, at all really um going through so timing isn't always an i don't think necessarily an issue um so there we go. And a new visitor. So thank you. Hello, uh, Vancouver Island. I'm on Vancouver Island as well on the West Coast. Yeah, West Coast. Of, well, West Coast of BC. I'm on the uh, technically East Coast of the island, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Hi, Caitlin. Welcome. Welcome to the channel uh, for tuning in. Thanks for saying hi. Uh, first time here. So don't be afraid to ask a question or chime in. Always good to have new people. It's awesome. That's great. And MC picking up something from Facebook Marketplace and paid with e-transfers to EQ. It takes 30 minutes to send. It was awkward standing around waiting with TD. It's more instant. Yeah, I, I'm the same way. I've tried. This is the thing with e-transfers. I have, I, I bank with CIBC and I've never had really problems with interact like with the e-transfers at all. Unless there's something wrong with the network, uh, you know, somebody's just for some reason the, the network is down or not working. And when you're actually in there, it says like these these might be delayed and that's the case that's the case i transfer quite often 
like as I do transfers to my like CIBC to ShakePay, it's literally almost instant uh, when it goes when it goes through. So haven't had no issues with that. That being said, uh, you're mentioning uh, you're mentioning e, um, EQ Bank. Uh, obviously, it's all, like online kind of online only bank, and with Well Simple, they have. They do e-transfers now on their ca- like on their cash app. They do e-transfers. I tried to do an e-transfer there. It didn't work. It ended up hanging. And it's what I found with it. It was really hard to figure out how to, it kind of was, it was just hung up. It just didn't, nothing, nothing happened. And it was like a couple of days. And I, found, I thought, okay, I'll leave it a day. I'll leave it to you. And I left it because I was just trying to put money, some money into my, into my shake band. It didn't, it wasn't really important. Thankfully I wasn't buying anything. And it took me and I, then I go in and I couldn't even figure out how to cancel it. So I had to actually go into the support chat to walk me through the cancel. And, and it was just like a big rigmarole. So I haven't sent anything from, I haven't sent anything from well, simple uh, e-transfer since, cause it was just a bad experience on that one for me. Um, maybe it had to do something to do with maybe because it was going to shake pay and it was like an auto, you know, they do it like auto retrieval. I, I don't know. It just didn't, it just didn't, it just didn't work. Um, and simply has taken 30, 30 minutes as well. Much of it. Yeah. I don't know if anybody else has had that experience with simply, um, let me know, maybe they batch them or something, you know, they don't maybe do a lot of the transactions and they wait to, for them to batch or no idea. Um, I could see maybe that not as many people e-transferring out of there that it takes, but it shouldn't take, I mean, you'd think it, I mean, 30 minutes isn't the end of the world necessarily, but if you're trying to buy something from someone, it, you know, obviously it's, um, it uh you don't want it to hang up you know if you're like i know some people pay their if they're renting or something like that they pay their you know they might pay their rent to the landlord by e-transfer too and you're trying to like send them something and it's like you know it take if it gets hung up for any long period of time they're like where's my money um so and td so you pay the dollar fees you don't have to stand around with it. yeah so that's the thing so if you're meeting someone up and you want to send the money you're just kind of sitting there like twiddling your thumbs and they think you're a deadbeat that you can't pay the money, <laughs> but it, it can add up though. Like I check double check though, MC, like, I don't know how much you any or MC or anybody that uses, if you do do a lot of e-transfers and I started to notice I was sending them more and my plan that I had from my, I talked about before my old banking plan didn't include, didn't include e-transfers. And I, I get my bill and I'm like, well, hold on. You know, if I'm sending, you know, a couple hundred bucks a month to, uh, shake pay or have to pay someone something it's costing me a dollar that can add up uh, over over the course of course of the month so my bill i've been ha- i'm happy to report actually my my banking bill has gone down from like sometimes 40 40 dollars down to the maximum i pay now is 16.95 so i'm happy about that just took a bit of just took a bit of uh, recent you know effort to get that changed on my uh, my behalf and it's crazy because they don't let you change banking plans online you have like they don't make it easy right to save money they you have to call the call in or either or a go to the branch but if you go to the branch you have to go sit down with someone and they have to do the whole spiel with you so it's kind of a waste of time and if you've ever been to a branch lately like nobody works in the branch half the time anymore so they're busy and you know nobody can just change an account on the computer for some reason the teller the teller can't do it for whatever reason and so you just call in but of course you have to wait on hold and then you have to go through the thing and then you change it and do the whole pain in the butt but save money long story short save money yeah you just don't want to wait around in the uh, outside in the cold or somewhere waiting with someone with some uh, with a stranger waiting for their for their money to to uh, to appear the thing the thing with that is maybe maybe mc like i don't know maybe maybe it's also other other financial institutions receiving like as the as the receiving end of like when you i don't know this it's weird well no because it sends you an email out and you can choose where to deposit it so it's not going directly to their bank um so i don't know that's kind of yeah it always takes um takes um it's weird taking that taking that long because usually usually this is the thing with interact usually it's like i always find it's like it's it's either um in it's either instant or or sometimes you're waiting i've had to wait a few times but not never like half an hour um other than that long time but yeah first world problems pay with cash um yeah that's the probably the it's probably the 
the easiest um, the easiest way uh, going forward. <laughs> But then you have to go to a bank machine to get cash. I can't. I can't tell you the last time I paid anything with cash. I, I honestly can't. I don't know anybody else in the. Let me know in the chat who's watching. When's the last time you paid something in in actual like money? Uh, I I couldn't tell you the last time. I know in my. I have a dish on the counter of my. I have a dish on the counter of my kitchen that I throw my keys in and my wallet in when I come in and I've got like a $5 bill in there that has been in that dish from, cause I've moved and everything else. I just packed up stuff and the bill has been in there for probably two years now. So yeah, I haven't used, I haven't used cash for, for so long. It's always just, it's, like tap or credit card, prepaid payments, e-transfer, um, not cash. Um, there we go. And only Facebook. So, so Justin uses cash for Facebook marketplace buys. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have to go to the bank machine to get cash and stuff like that. It's always a pain. I, I barely go in. I don't know everybody else feel like I barely go into the, into the bank. I had to go to the bank to get a bank draft. That was the last time I was in a, in a branch. Um, and that was painful because you have to line up for get a, to get a bank, you know, a bank draft and it's a pain in the butt and they charge you, they charge you money and it takes, it takes some, you know, it's, um, just a pain, pain to have to go in and do these things. So, oh yeah. Cause you have a new cat too. And it's, um, had to pay cash for a kid and it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. It is kind of weird seeing like money and change and stuff like that. I used to, I mean, I remember used to go, I mean, really haven't used cash it's funny how it's, I think it shifted in 20, like 2020, right back to pandemic. Everybody just thought cash was, I don't know, well, cash is dirty, but it, you know, a lot of places stopped taking cash or didn't want it because they don't want to handle the money and everything else. And uh, you buy more online and this got easier to use your phone for tapping stuff and all that kind of stuff. And um, I remember before though, you'd pay cash, like you'd always take, have cash. And I used to have, what I used to do is, take my change and just, I would just throw it in. I had a big giant, like to back up, like a big giant bottle kind of thing, like big piggy bank, kind of, essentially a big jar. And I'd throw my, throw my, whenever I had changes coming home, I would just throw the change in there. And this is going to date myself again. There was pennies at one point, but those loonies and toonies, the savings really add up in a jar when you're throwing your change in there. And what I would do when I went, what I would do is just throw it in and then when I would go on vacation for my spending money on vacation, I'd be, like if I go away for, I'd let it sit, gather for a year and uh, I would, I would have to, I'd have to roll it, but you'd roll the toonies and loonies and you'd have put a bit in there. It would actually quite surprising. It would, it would add up quite quickly. So I could see how, I could see how um, there's some of those features with, with your bank or your, like some of your, when you're using debit cards and stuff, they have the, like the, the round, the rounding feature. I could see turning that on and actually having quite a, I mean, I don't go out and spend a lot of on the, on like daily transactions really much anymore, but I could see if you're, if you're using your card a lot over the course of a year, that roundup would actually really, would really start to, um, start to add up, which would be, I should, I, if it'd be, it'd be good if, if shake pay had that. Cause I use that mostly to get my, my Bitcoin cash back. It'd be nice if they had a roundup that they would round it up and then buy Bitcoin with it. That'd be kind of, that'd be kind of fun. So your wife, uh, so your, oh, Justin's wife has lots of uh, cash. So keep your cash under the mattress. Yeah. It's cr It's crazy. I don't know. It's just, it's weird cash business. That's okay though, I guess. And MC stores automatically assume you won't pay in cash. So usually automatically start setting up they do. They do. They turn. They usually say like Visa, Mas Visa, debit. How you want to pay, and it, it comes up on the machine for for cash. Um, that's kind of funny. Yeah, can canceling. It's true. Um, it's uh, it is true how times how times have changed. I mean, I I remember. I don't like dating myself though, but I like I remember before even bank machines, right? You had to go into the bank to get physical cash, and if you wanted money for because the banks were open Monday to Friday if you wanted money for the weekend to do anything, you would have to go on Friday before the bank closed to take money out uh, from the teller. There was not even a bank machine. 
And uh, I remember when when Bank of Montreal, because I think Bank of Montreal was one of the first Canadian banks to get their in, like they 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 would they, they called it the Insta. Did they still call it the Insta Teller? I don't know, but they had the Insta Teller. You got a card, and you could take money out of the machine at the branch. And the, but of course, bank machines weren't everywhere. They were just at, the, at some of the banks. So you could go and get your cash that way. That kind of changed, which is crazy. If you th- if you tell someone now, we, if you tell a kid, you know, someone who's a kid, like a kid now or something, telling them how we used to have to go. Like I remember going to the bank with my mom on a Friday, so she could take money out, and that's just what you did. And you went to the bank to pay your bills and balance your checkbook. Like it, it's just, it's 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 crazy how things used to work. But and then if you told someone back then that we'd be we'd be tapping a tapping our cell phone on a terminal to pay all, to pay for stuff. They think we were crazy. So <laughs> NFC, uh, a few weeks ago, traveling, pay everything in cash to avoid the, the fees paying with cash. So often was it traveling back in time? Check, check out the well, I think with the well, simple card now that they've mailed out, I don't think you pay conversion. You pay, obviously you pay, obviously, you don't they don't charge you an additional fee from my understanding mc check into that because i think i read that um i don't use it yet it got it's funny i got me i have it in the mail but i moved and i went to my old address so i'm getting that sorted out um but i think the card they mail now doesn't charge you the extra percentage but they'll like, they charge you the exchange but not not the not the extra charge so it's better than using like a credit card or something like that and someone knocked on the door asking for donation in cash and there was like no cash in this house. Yeah, that'd be me. Like you see the people, you always see the people sometimes, I mean, at Christmas time, they have the people ringing the bells and stuff, but there's sometimes there's like, uh, you know, girl guides, boy scout, like whoever outside the grocery stores and stuff like that. And they like one time, some of the time, or the, or even the uh, remembrance day with the, with the poppies and you, you walk into the store and then they have the jar to give change, you know, change or whatever. And it's like, they have to get a terminal just to tap a couple bucks because that would make more sense um, because no one has any change. Like uh, you don't have any, you walk out of the store, you don't have any money. So. And there we go. Some good news. There we go, Justin. Yeah, we were talking about that earlier in the week. So your, your job interview, you said you had mentioned that you were going for one. So it went good. That's awesome. Um, and you were getting your YouTube channel going. So once you get it going, let me know because we'll make sure we pass it out to everybody, Justin, once you get uh, up there. And uh, don't worry, your, all your first videos, everybody's first videos on their, on our YouTubes are terrible. So don't uh, stress about that. And uh, just the best suggestion, I mean, we kind of mentioned it uh, with, with Candice on, on that live stream last weekend is just, just do it and put it up and it'll get easier and better each video. And it, you'll have hopefully a lot of fun. It'll be good. Always good to have more people in the uh, in the space, and I will. Uh, I'll look. I look forward to. I look forward to checking out your channel, and we'll share. We'll share it here. Not that I have bajillions of followers, but we'll try and get you uh, uh, started with a few, at least a few people going over there to check out your channel. That'd be good. That's awesome. Congratulations. So hopefully the job. Uh, hopefully the next phone call for the for the call uh, is that they want you to start working. That that would be good. Uh, T, yeah, Bank of Montreal used to have those too. They used to have coin counting machines. You'd dump them all in and then you'd put it into the account. Um, yeah, I th- and then also with the, what, what they, those did MC too is they would they would transfer out, like if you had, you know how sometimes in Canada, like we'll get the, we get the US, we'd get the U, it's so long since I've t- had money in my pocket, but sometimes you get like the odd like Canadian, when we had pennies especially, we'd have, you we'd use US, we'd use US coins as basically par, right? But I think the coin machines, what they did too, is they would filter out the, all the U.S. all the U.S. denominated um, currency, and then they would keep it separate, and then they would make that, and then, and then people say, "What? Well, yeah, exactly, it was not accurate." And um, it was. Uh, I did that a few times because it was. I mean, I'd be happy to even pay it because I didn't. If you cash it in and you weren't a customer, you'd pay a small fee, but just the timing, the time of it, it really the time savings was huge, but they did get rid of them. I think they were breaking all the time too, because people would be dumping, uh, dumping up other stuff, other stuff in there. I know some grocery stores still, I've seen them in some grocery stores, maybe not as much anymore, but I saw that I remember seeing them there as well. And you print out your little ticket and you can cash it in uh, for, um, for, for money, um, which was, which was handy, but they would take that. And then also 
they would also take out like some of the old quarters used to be have silver in them too right so they were worth more because they were worth more melt like melted down than than they were worth in the quarter because of the silver content and they would i think filter those off as well uh which is kind of funny um to go to go through uh about 15 years ago it was a cool idea someone had they would write on a bill a url and you go to the site and you could plug in the unique id and you could see where the bill traveled oh that's kind of interesting yeah that's kind of neat actually uh putting that putting that on there um i think we'd probably be surprised generally where our money where our money has been or or not some because if some people are just sitting on sitting on stuff i mean that's kind of why they got rid of the penny right like it wasn't really serving much purpose and most people were th it was costing it's costing the bank a bank account like the bank the government you know costing them more to make a penny than the penny was worth right and so that's why we got with the rounding now because what people did with pennies they just wouldn't use them and they would just throw them in the piggy bank because it was just a pain to carry them all around uh so uh, a lot of stuff just kind of sat there um and that I, and I, I, we're kind of just getting that way with ca with cash now too if you i bet you if, you if you had some of those url ones you probably see it hasn't been anywhere for a long time we're just not 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 changing hands as much um it's all kind of going uh, digitally anyways there we go. This was a good. Uh, this was a good live stream. I always let me remove that. That doesn't mean to be there. Um, that um, uh, coin machines, eighty dollars in coins, and this guy still beside the machine counted and said, "Damn, he had eight dollars in coins in the tiny jar," and then he left. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I had this. I I, I remember bringing in when I had the count the coin counting machines. I went when I went to BMO, and I had to bring it in and like it was a like a you know those big like pickle you know those big pickle jars. It was like that, one of those, like that, that size. And it was almost full, but I was so like, there was so much change. I couldn't, I couldn't, um, I couldn't carry the jar because it would break. Like it would just, it would, it would break. So I put it into a, I put it into a pail and I came into the bank carrying like a big red, like water pail and, uh, put it in. And there, there must've been, I remember taking to the, taking the thing to the, it must've taken me half an hour, like forever it seemed like. I'm putting this change in and, and doing its thing. There was a, there was, I mean, I'm trying to remember, but it, I mean, there wasn't, it was a, it was over, it was almost, almost a thought, like it was almost a thousand dollars sitting in there in change. Cause those tunies and loonies would really add up. Right. And there was, and it, there was pennies and all this stuff. And it was, it was a, around eight, it was over $800. I remember going to the teller and she's like, Whoa, that's a lot. <laughs> Cause I was there for what half an hour, slowly dumping the silly bucket into the machine. Um, but it adds up. There we go. That's awesome. Well, thanks everybody. It's coming up. It's almost nine o'clock, which means, uh, this stream went like super fast. Everybody's very tall. Uh, everybody, lots of comments today. It's, it was, it was a, it was a great, uh, great stream. Everybody's in a good mood on Friday and has lots to lots to share. So thanks everybody for joining. If you haven't done it yet, we always like to say, hit the like button. Uh, it definitely helps the channel out. Um, uh, channels doing great. It's, uh, getting lots, getting the views still. So really happy about that. Um, Slowly but surely, when we, and then the goal for the new year is to start making some money off the YouTube, uh, but not there yet, but it will be. But uh, we'll yeah, definitely have a good weekend, everybody. Uh, thanks for watching. Do really appreciate it. I'll get a few, I uh, will get some videos on the channel over the weekend. I always do get a bit of an update. I promise. Uh, have definitely more time on the weekend to uh, to work on uh, videos, that's for sure. And uh, it was, it was a lot, it was a good stream. Thanks, Jason. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, thanks for everybody else. We will. We'll catch you on Monday. Have a great weekend. Hopefully the market, I haven't even looked really at the markets since we've been chatting here. So hopefully we end, end in a little bit of green today would be nice. And I'm still optimistic we get a, we get a, a Santa. I like to be optimistic. So hopefully we do get a Santa rally um, going forward. We will, we will see. Time will tell. Um, but that's it. Great day. Have a great day, everybody. Uh, let's end. We'll put a bit of fireplace on here to end and roll out and then, uh, I'll get my day started and then wherever you are, hopefully your day's maybe part over. Thanks everybody. Take care.